Good evening and welcome. My name is Sani Kontulaweb. I'm the director of the Finnish Institute in St. Petersburg. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, as we are continuing our program within the Nordic Weeks in St. Petersburg. Uh, today our lecture is dedicated to the city of Lahti, which has been named as European Green Capital 2021. To celebrate this uh, title, we included in the Nordic Weeks program uh, an exhibition that shows posters from Lahti International Poster Triennale. They were especially sele selected from a huge collection of posters, uh, 70,000 to be more precise, and um, uh, they all uh, are part of this uh, Lahti uh, Poster Triennial. And um, a few of them are dedicated to ecology. So we chose the ones that are uh, with the topic of ecology for our exhibition. And uh, this exhibition is um, uh, available to see here in St. Petersburg on Vasilyevsky Island uh, in a cultural space called The Lines or Lini in Russian. And uh, it is there uh, until the 10th of October. So I would warmly like to welcome you to, to visit it and see it. And then uh, at the same time, of course, please pop in to see our exhibition called uh, Recycle and Trash to Fashion. But uh, tonight our guest speaker is also from uh, Lahti, uh, Elina Oyala is the environmental director of city of Lahti and uh, she will tell us about how uh, Lahti uh, gained the title of green capital of Europe, uh, what it means to the city and perhaps we will also hear some about future steps and future plans Lahti may have. And I would uh, kindly like to remind all of the viewers that uh, towards the end of um, uh, Elina Oyala's presentation, you will have a uh, possibility to ask her questions. So uh, please send them to the chat of the YouTube channel. We'll be happy to um, uh, uh, present them for, for Elina towards the end of today. Uh, but now I would like to give the floor to uh, Elina Oyala and uh, warm greetings to the city of Lahti. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> and I will try to share my screen from here. Just a moment, please. And um, I guess you can see it now, right? Yes, we can. Nice Great. full screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Okay, so I will tell you about our journey to become the European Green Capital this year. So what is this European Green Capital about? Uh, a lot of people know the, the title of cultural capital, but uh, this European Green Capital is a bit less known. Uh, and and a lot of people ask us whether we have lobbied the commission or or um, paid a lot of money to get this title. But uh, this is actually uh, a competition that the European Commission organizes each year. And uh, the, the competition is based on, on different indicators, uh, 12 of them. And they are um, about climate issues, um, about air quality, biodiversity, waste, and governance, for example. And in case you are interested to, to read more about this, um, I advise you to go to the web page that you can see in the bottom left corner, greenlahti.fi and facts, and, and there you can you can see the whole application that we we sent to the commission. And in the final, we were competing against France. Um, there were Lille and Strasbourg in the final with us. Uh, and um, and we managed to 
to win in our third try. So for us, it was it was very big thing to to get this um, award, and and we worked very hard uh, to get this. And Lati is in a in a very um, how do you say ambitious company uh, when thinking of all the previous European green capitals. We are by far the smallest, um, the, no the most northern and also the, the most eastern green capital so far. And Lahti uh, has about 120,000 inhabitants and it is, um, I'm actually not sure, maybe seventh or eighth largest city in, in, in Finland at the moment. And why did we um, apply for this, this um, title? Um, it has to do with, uh, with the citizens, um, um, kind of how they feel about the city, because now we got this international um, award and then people uh, in the city, they realize that, uh, that we are actually quite good in what we do. And um, and also we've got a lot of international visibility in um, in different media's, different uh, webinars, and uh, and other events. And uh, and due to the the COVID nineteen situation, it it has been a bit different than what we expected. But at least we had some time to to prepare for this. Um, and. And now uh, working remotely, it's also more easy to to go around the globe in a in a week, uh, in different kind of events. So it it's also provides um, opportunities uh, working remotely at the time. Um, but the the increase in the demand of tourism that didn't happen uh, this year. Um, we had expectations for this, but uh, but the situation has been quite difficult. Um, but you never know how how far the 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 title carries us. So so it can happen then then a bit um, later. And uh, and we seek for for new funding opportunities consistently. Um, we need to get external funding for our projects and and to to create new solutions so that's why we we also like to um, be visible and to to get to good um, consortiums when when thinking of for example eu uh, projects or other international projects and on the right hand side you can see the the previous green capitals we are the 12th city to become the European Green Capital. And uh, we are in a very um, ambitious group. You can see that there are, for example, Stockholm and Copenhagen that are very um, known for their environmental work and climate work. So we are very happy to be, be in, this, in this group. And we also have a network with these green capitals. So it's also a way of um, kind of keeping this alive also after the, the, the year itself. And the green capital for the year 2023 was, was selected three, years, three weeks ago. In Lahti, we hosted the European Green Capital Awards um, and Tallinn got the, the title for that year. So it's... Um, it's not that far <laughs> to travel to Estonia to see the 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 best practices in in Tallinn, and in this um, this network, it's 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 all about um, sharing best practices, and and I think it makes a lot of sense because a lot of cities have very ambitious environmental targets, and and then it there's no use of um, inventing the wheel again in each city so we can really learn from each other and i think in this kind of um, environmental and climate uh, work it's 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 quite urgent work and therefore um, all the 
good ideas should be stolen from, <laughs> from each other. Sorry, I have a bit of a flu, so I must, my voice is a bit weak. But um, we actually um, didn't just start our environmental work when we started applying for this um, award. The, the work started decades ago. Um, our lake, the lake you can see in my <laughs> background, uh, the Lake Vesijärvi was, it was the most polluted lake in Finland in the 80s. And, uh, and um, in the, at the end of the 80s, um, a project started in order to, to clean the lake. And that was a very long and difficult and uh, time consuming project. Uh, but in the end, uh, when you see the lake today, it's um, really like an oasis to the citizens and, and also um, a source of vitality to the city. And, um, and um, it's funny to, when you think of the year 87 that people, some people were actually against um, the restoration of the, of the lake, but now it, it, it feels very unbelievable. And, um, and I think people were also kind of used to having the lake uh, as a very polluted one. Uh, and it wasn't possible to see how nice it could be. And today we can swim in it and, uh, and fish, eat the fish and, um, and have some other leisure activities. And also this old harbor area in my background is, is very nice place to just hang out. And then um, in 1996, we had our first um, environmental policy. And, and this is um, one certain milestone because this was the, the, the po point when, when um, there was a common understanding that, that we need to do something um, environmental wise. And then in 1998, um, a waste management system was, was created and this was based on source separation. And at that time, um, when you went somewhere to visit another city, you were actually surprised to see uh, that um, people didn't separate their waste because we are, and we were very used to this um, but it wasn't the case in, in other parts of Finland at that time. So that was really pioneer work um, in the waste management um, sector. And, and this is the system that we, we have even now. Of course, um, it has developed over time, but um, it's really the, the starting point for all circular economy. And then um, uh, going forward, um, we have a, a grain cluster in that was founded in 2003. And this is uh, something that happened um, just um, by itself. The city didn't influence in this, but it's, um, it's a way of um, getting the, the grain uh, from the local producers. Um, a smaller amounts to the big uh, bakeries, and it's something um, that's that's very uh, well. Uh, they works very well even today, and it's it's very very good to to have this kind of um, system in order to um, support the smaller uh, producers. And then um, in um, two thousand and nineteen. Uh, we uh, abandoned coal, coal in, um, in the use of uh, district heating production. So uh, um, we don't burn coal anymore. And, and now we, we produce district heat uh, by biomass and uh, energy waste. Um, so it's, it's a lot better um, compared to, to coal. And that um, enables us to get closer to our 
carbon neutrality target, which we have set for 2025. And, and this target is, is the, um, the, the fastest uh, target in, in, in the larger cities in Finland. And um, it's also 10 years ahead of the national climate neutrality target, which is in 2035. And the EU one is in 2050. So this is a certain milestone in the future. But, um, but of course, now being the green capital, this is, this is also something that we have looked forward to. And, and to show you where we are now, um, the CO2 emissions um, um, have developed, as you can see in the, in the top left corner. Um, here you can see the effect of um, abandoning coal um, in the, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but uh, between 2017 and 2021, um, the drop is mostly because of um, abandoning the coal. And now the energy sector remains um, one of the largest sectors uh, in CO2 emissions, but, um, um, but there aren't um, this kind of... Um, uh, like, like certain actions that can help us to bring the emissions down. Um, so we have um, kind of gathered or picked up the the low hanging fruit already. So um, so we need uh, different kind of smaller actions in order to to bring these emissions down. And another sector that's that's um, um, uh, about the same size as energy production is, is the transport sector. And there as well, we need um, a lot of different kind of actions in the city, but also behavior change uh, towards sustainable mobility. And in the top right corner, you can see the, the energy consumptions consumption and and how it has developed and and we do a lot of work in order to to improve energy efficiency in the city and in the top um, the the bottom left corner you can see the the district heating production um, uh, change um, how in, in 10 years we've managed to to be to um, to change it from, from um, coal to biomass and energy waste. And um, um, this incineration is, is, not the, is not the end point, but it's a transition phase because uh, um, we need to move to, to a purely renewable energy. But of course, this is better than, than burning coal. And then when you look at the utilization of municipal waste, um, the situation has, has changed there a lot too. And, um, and at this point, we only have 1% that is not um, um, utilized. Um, and we actually don't have a landfill anymore in the city. And... Um, and the utilization rate is, is very high, 99%, but uh, the recycling rate is lacking behind. So we need to uh, continue with our environmental education and, uh, and uh, raising awareness of the importance of um, recycling and separating the, the waste. So this is a continue, continuous work. And we do a lot of um, environmental education activities in the um, in the daycare and uh, and schools, and it's very nice to notice uh, when you think of recycling, for example, how the children when they learn something at school, they go go home and they teach their parents. So we get a lot of. Um, good um, effect and wider effect this way. 
And then um, we have a big target for sustainable urban mobility. Um, there is a lot to do in this thing because um, in Lahti too, people like to drive their private cars. And, uh, and especially now during the, the COVID situation, I think everywhere the, the amount of public transport has um, crashed or at least um, diminished a lot. So we need to get people back to, to buses and, and using active modes of, of transportation. And um, we, uh, we also are enabling um, electric um, uh, vehicles in, in the city. And, and that's also a very significant way of cutting the emissions of transport. And um, the air quality has improved a lot in the city center. And this is, this is due to, to different actions, but also because the, the cars are, are polluting less than, than before. And then the phosphorus concentration um, in, the, in the lake has, uh, has decreased, which is very good, good thing. And then um, we have managed to increase the, the protected areas, the conservation areas um, in the city of Lahti uh, since uh, the year 2000. But, uh, but I must say that there is a lot to do still because we haven't actually been able to, to increase the, the, the amount, amount of area in the recent years. And then looking um, to this year and our themes um, that we we wanted to to rise raise in this in this um, occasion, we chose carbon neutral life, uh, which has a lot to do um, uh, with um, uh, with the um, sustainable everyday life that is pleasant and nice and and that people can kind of like enjoy the so sustainable lifestyle and citizen participation very important when thinking of environmental stuff it's it's not nice to be forced but the change needs to become um, from the people themselves and also we need to get the people to feel like they they um they have their say and, and they, they are heard. And then circular economy, very important theme for, for Lahti throughout the years. And then nature and water. So this has to do with, um, with biodiversity. And some, some um, of the measures that um, we have been doing and, and that we are still doing, um, in carbon neutral life, um, we just launched city bikes. Finally, it has been a very long project, but we we now have um, electric bikes in the in the city, and that is very nice. And we um, we got um, a lot of electric buses, um, seventeen of them um, this year, and and it's. Um, um, it's also a big, big thing when thinking of the, the communal transport in, in the city. And the 1.5 degree lifestyle campaign, it means um, a campaign where we have chosen normal citizens in, in Lahti and a couple of celebrities as well, uh, but from very different backgrounds um, and and they do or did a calculation for their carbon footprint in the beginning. And then, um, then they get uh, a target, like where they, where, how, they, how they should um, diminish their carbon footprint um, in order to, to um, um, lead to a, a sustainable life. And, um, and there, it's very nice to, to kind of see how people can choose very differently how they 
can change their life lifestyle and how uh, for some people it's easier to to buy less things and for some people it's easier to to maybe skip one uh, trip to the to the um, south or or uh, vacation uh, trip uh, and and some people um, change uh, maybe by electric car instead of uh, a conventional one so it's it's a very um, interesting project and, and we do a big campaign um, in this um, in the in also in the media in in Lahti. Um, and then um, also, um, if you look at the citizen participation, we do a lot of um, uh, funding for uh, projects that the citizens can suggest or, or local associations. And it has been very popular. And I actually have another slide of that later. And, and also we have um, put focus on, on children and youth during this year. And we have a group of, um, of uh, like environmental group for, for youth uh, where we discuss um, important things with them. And uh, it's, it's one part of um, getting people included in this in this climate issue and we know that um, many young people feel very stressed about the, the climate issues so therefore we want to offer this kind of support as well and then in circular economy um, we are uh, developing or actually revising our uh, circular economy roadmap and also we have developed uh, a carbon neutral construction industry uh, center, uh, which is a virtual center that collected all the um, stakeholders and um, local industry and, and, um, and research in order to, to um, promote this carbon neutral construction. And, um, and then in um, nature and biodiversity or nature and water, we do um, um, a pilot on ecological compensation. And this is something very new that, um, that hasn't been done yet. So it's very, very interesting as well. And then um, if you think of the, the green capital, um, how it's, how it works we want to work in in different levels we want to offer a smooth everyday life um, for our citizens in lahti and then uh, functioning and sustainable cities uh, when we cooperate together in 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 the national level with other cities and then um, we want to to have the visibility in an international um, level as well And here is um, more info about the environmental projects that the citizens were able to, to uh, propose. Uh, we have funded 50 projects so far, and um, they vary a lot um, in size. But for example, the litter picker borrowing stations have been installed uh, in different places in the city. So they are there for anyone to use. Um, and then they are, they have been actually quite nicely also returned to the, <laughs> to the station. So it works very well. And, um, and it has also, um, especially in the, in the spring when, when there are no leaves in the trees and you can see the litter better, uh, we often have campaigns for picking up litter um, and, and they were very popular during that time. So, so, um, so that was very nice to, to see. And then there was, for example, art exhibitions or, or different kind of um, events that were, that were um, suggested and, and funded. And then um, 
we have done a lot of virtual things uh, because of the COVID situation, but also because it's uh, practical. And we have had this uh, kind of um, dialogue theory um, each month, and um, they are following uh, theme-wise the, the indicators that we had in the European Green Capital competition. And there are still three of them left. Um, um, the next one is, is in October. And here it's very nice um, that we have um, invited the, the previous environmental, um, the, the previous green, European Green Capitals to join these uh, dialogues. And, and they are actually quite nice to, to, um, to have this kind of uh, discussion and to, to um, um, have a bit of an uh, 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 overview from, from different cities. Uh, we have done a lot of um, events during this year. Um, of course, a lot of them have been postponed or, or, um, or even cancelled, but um, uh, or just uh, switched to online mode. Um, so the, um, the European Green Capital Awards um, that I mentioned before, they, they took place in Lahti and that was actually very nice to, to see people here um, in the city. And um, something that's still coming up um, in November, we have Ecclesity Forum, it's, it's online. Um, it's about digital um, solutions. And then uh, Planetary Health Conference is, uh, is also in November. And there um, we talked, talk about the kind of like the planetary health and the human health. So how nature, what kind of health benefits nature has and how to, to increase these health benefits. So this is actually something that um, Lahti will do in the future as well. And there we will reveal our long-term um, uh, plan in this, in this theme. So this can be considered as, as, um, as, as a sort of legacy of this year. And in case you are interested, there is a, a web page where you can see more of the events. And then um, something about um, the cooperation with, um, with St. Petersburg. Um, we have been organizing Environmental Week um, for 25 years now. Last Saturday, we had the 25th <laughs> event, um, or the, the, we finished the, the 25th Environmental Week. And um, this was brought to Lahti from St. Petersburg um, in 1997 by our environmental director back, back then. And, uh, and it has been very, very nice to have this kind of um, connection. I don't actually know how, um, how long it has been organized in St. Petersburg, but at least for us, it has been a quarter of a decade already so it, it must have been a longer time already uh, we have had different themes um, each year last year it was close and and it has been food and mobility nature ecosystem services and this year it was about dialogue and we also had um, um, separate to this but at the same time we had a um, a big dialogue event in the city where we had 130 people, um, partly online, partly present, and and we were discussing the kind of like the continuation, continuation, continuation of the uh, European green, green Capital, um, or how we can continue as an environmental city after this year. And this was about um, um, 
uh, citizen engagement and it was very nice to to see people joining joining this event to discuss how they feel about this and for us we feel like it it's very important to have the kind of uh, continuation of this theme because um, we have come a long way and uh, and we want to continue in this in this topic um, later as well. And in this environmental week, we have a lot of organizations um, that take part and a lot of events and and it's nice to to have this sort of uh, continuous work work going on in the in the city each year. And then just to, to finish, um, I'd like to read you something. Um, I don't know if you know about um, the history of Lahti, but, uh, but we are not the most um, educated um, city. Uh, when you look at the level of education um, average in Finland, um, and also we don't have the biggest budget. Um, and we've struggled the depression and also the um, the structural unemployment. Um, but anyhow, we've somehow managed to to make good decisions at the right time and also um, invested in in the good things. Um, so so that's why I wanted to share with you this this um, text, I will just read it. Um, change is an endurance sport. It takes time and resolve to see it through. Change is scary. It's easy to cling to the past and seek security in the current ways of doing, doing things. It takes guts to ask for more, a new approach, higher goals and a brighter future. Each crisis is a test that shows our capacity to endure change. Forward-looking leaders are the first to identify and take on future challenges. No one knows this better than a city that has faced tough challenges by making everlasting decisions that promote a more sustainable tomorrow and lead, lead the way for a sustainable living with an enduring attitude. Lahti enduring change. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elina. That was wonderful. Um, absolutely wonderful uh, presentation. And it was uh, fantastic to hear, you know, all of the great things you have achieved uh, in Lahti. And, you know, amazing that the the story actually, you know, towards the European green capital started already in the 80s. It's like amazing how step by step you've just like uh, gone forward and uh, found solutions to many issues. So um, let's have a few questions from the audience. And uh, I hope our audience is, you know, going to be active now and you still have time to write your questions at the chat. Uh, but a few of them have already come through. So um, I'd like to start by a question uh, of, are there any special regional environmental laws in Lahti that regulate the activities of local businesses or residents? And mm. um, are there any punishments for the organizations uh, or residents who don't abide by these laws? Mm. Yes, of course we have the the it's in a national level the environmental law and uh, and different um, laws that apply in different different things and and also it it mostly comes from the EU the the legislation and then it's implemented in the in in the national level um, there are some. Uh, um, uh, punishment um, uh, methods, mostly just uh, um, that um, that you get some sort of fine if you 
um, for example, uh, take your or have an a legal illegal um, landfill somewhere or these kind of things. But often it's it's very difficult to to monitor this and uh, and also the the fines are not that big that um, it's it's it doesn't actually um, work that well. And in this sense, I, I feel like it's it's more important to to um, increase the level of knowledge and and um, to educate people in order to to um, avoid these kind of things. But yeah, of course, we see trash in the street like like anywhere else. Um, and 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 sometimes there are different kind of for example, if if oil, for example, is is leaking somewhere or these kind of things, but um, but it's it's quite difficult to 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 avoid these um, uh, totally. But uh, but step by step, uh, <laughs> improving improving the thing. And one of our events um, that is taking place this fall is um, environmental crime seminar. And um, it's um, it's unfortunately not open to everyone. It's um, it's an event by the Finnish police and also FBI. So it's very very interesting event. It would be nice to be there, but unfortunately, it's it's not um, not open. So so these kind of things they are discussed, and I think everywhere the problem is that the the punishments are not so so big that it's it's not the incentive to 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 avoid it but you have to kind of like um just try to to change the behavior of people okay uh thank you uh we have a few more questions um how do you work with big companies uh, that use coal or petroleum and you know other this type of uh, industries that um, needs to produce production? Do you have any kind of collaboration with the big companies like these? Mm. Um, we have some companies that um, are partners in this European Green Capital Year. Um, and a lot of companies here want to voluntarily put a target for carbon neutrality or some sort of other sort of um, targets. But of course, we can't um, we can't uh, say that they can't um, operate the way uh, as long as they are obeying the law. So it's it's on a voluntary basis. But um, of course, we can have open discussions and and uh, bring our thoughts to their knowledge. Yeah, and I suppose that many companies in in Finland um, they they want to be you know eco friendly and sustainable, and it's uh, part of the values that many companies share. Now, would you agree? Yes, and um, I feel like it's um, it's very good for your business as well to to think of these kind of things, and uh, and a lot of companies have have seen this, and I I at least I feel like it's the path that that is inevitable that um, that um, for example the EU legislation is is pushing towards um, sustainability so therefore it's it's more it's better to be a forerunner than uh, than lacking behind um, so and also in in Lahti we we feel like uh, we want to um, support the kind of green technology and also um, um, export of that so it's um, it's very important to work together with the with the companies and and research okay well how about uh like uh, citizens of lahti uh 
what kind of like ecological projects can they be part of? And also a question continues by asking, uh, are there any certain specialists that are in great demand right now in Lahti? Um, well, the citizens, um, uh, we have different ways for the citizens to, to take part, for example, this project funding thing and also different kind of dialogues uh, when when it has to do with, um, for example, land use planning or or different um, things that um, happen in the city and we want to hear what the citizens think think for example if if um, some some building needs to be uh, like rebuilt or something like this so it's um we try to to include them uh in many ways um and when it comes to to experts um well i think um um as i mentioned we don't have that um, high level of education in Lahti, which just recently became a university city. Um, we are the newest <laughs> university city in, in, in Finland, but also um, we don't have that much um, um, working places where, where you need the higher education. So I think um, in here, we have a lot of small and medium sized businesses, so we are kind of lacking the, the bigger uh, companies, um, so there are a lot of uh, reasons why, why the, the, employment, uh, the, the education rate is, is um, lower, but, um, but of course, it, well, it depends, um, sometimes it's a bit more difficult if I speak for my myself and and when recruiting it it might be a bit difficult to find find people but sometimes uh, easier and I think in this um, period of um, remote working uh, people have moved to um, have moved away from the capital and they are living somewhere else and and working from somewhere somewhere else we are just um, one hour away from Helsinki by train so it's it's not that bad and there are a lot of people who who work in um, in Helsinki yeah many people have uh, moved to their summer cottages and work <laughs> from there at least the lucky ones Right, uh, maybe a couple more questions before we let you go, because, you know, thank you for being so brave with the flu and everything. <laughs> um, so um, one of our viewers would like to ask you to tell a little bit more about the uh, ecological compensations. Yes, um, um, but I'm very happy to talk about this because this is new for us and uh, and new also uh, in Finland, at least maybe even globally. Um, we have one area that has been um, um, developed. So it has, um, how do you say, we have made plans uh, for, um, for, for new buildings um, in this area. And the, the forest in that area will partially be cut down. And and so we lose the the ecological status of this uh, current place, um, and the project is about compensating this biodiversity loss somewhere else. Um, and we have an area um, that we chose for this this project, and um, and it it works as a compensation area uh, in order to to preserve this ecological um, the, the ecological values um, it's not um, next to the forest lost so the the social compensation doesn't doesn't happen but the ecological one um, is calculated in the old one and the new one and then we compare these and uh, 
and it's a project uh, funded by the Kone Satya and uh, it's with the um, University of Helsinki and the Finnish Environmental Institute. So um, we are happy to be uh, this kind of platform for for new uh, methods and testing and and we also do this for other themes as well for example this carbon neutral construction that the city can can work as a as a place for different pilots and uh, and uh, research so it's uh, it's very interesting in that sense it is indeed Okay, shall we take one more question and then start to wrap it up? So, um, what is the next goal of Lahti when you reach the carbon neutrality in 2025? What happens next? Um, well, I think um, so. We have a lot to do <laughs> to to reach that that target, but of course, it's wise to look look ahead. Uh, one of the targets that we already have is uh, to be waste free by 2050. And, and we also have a target for overconsumption. So these kind of things um, that you need to kind of develop all the way. And, um, and also when it comes to to carbon neutrality, um, the target means uh, cutting the emissions by 80% and then compensating or binding the rest uh, carbon in sinks. Um, so there we can also um, develop it into cutting more emissions and compensating less. So, so these kind of things um, that, that, um, that we have been thinking about here. Okay, we are wishing you all the best on that journey. Thank you. And uh, of course, once more, warm congratulations on the European Green Capital status. Uh, today, we have definitely heard, you know, how much work has gone into it to, to reach this title. And I'm sure we can all agree that Lahti definitely deserves <laughs> this status. And uh, if our uh, viewers today would like to learn more about uh, Lahti being the European Green Capital, you can please have a look on their web page, which is greenlahti.fi. And uh, of course, the Nordic weeks in St. Petersburg uh, are not over yet. We have um, 11 more days to go where you can visit the exhibition on Vasilyevsky Island. Uh, there are going to be more online presentations and discussions. And of course, uh, in one week's time, we will show some Nordic films. So please have a look at the um, uh, nordicweeks.ru webpage, uh, our whole program. And uh, Elina Oyala, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, warm regards to Lahti and uh, all the best for everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Bye.